Hey everybody, we've got a new blog post from Waymo out today on their remote operators, or as they call it, their fleet response team. So this is a really interesting blog post that shows us the tools that these fleet response people have, what they can do to control the car, and what that really looks like from their perspective. So really since the cruise scandal where Cruz had their permit pulled, these remote operators have been a big topic of discussion. There's been a lot of sort of misconceptions about what it is, honestly. A lot of people thinking that Cruz was actually driving their cars remotely with human drivers, that the computers weren't driving, that it was really just some human somewhere else driving. And that's not the case, obviously. These computers really are driving the car. But sometimes they can phone up and ask a friend in the call center to give them some help. So this blog post gives us a much better idea of what that really looks like in the real world. So let's go ahead and read it together, and I'll show you some of the videos they've included. So first we've got some videos here. Waymo says, here's the Waymo driver navigating San Francisco, Phoenix, and LA without the help of fleet response. And you can see it doing all the maneuvers it needs to do all in its own. So they're really trying to fight back against the conception that the car can't do these things itself, and it requires fleet operators to give it a hint. So they start off by saying, The Waymo driver autonomously navigates tens of thousands of rider-only miles across San Francisco, Phoenix, Los Angeles, and Austin daily. It can navigate common scenarios, like adhering to a crossing guard detecting traffic, as well as more unique interactions, like avoiding a swerving vehicle. As the Waymo driver travels across town, it might contact fleet response for additional help. So this isn't a human driving the car. This is just asking for additional help when the situation is ambiguous. Much like a phone a friend, when the Waymo vehicle encounters a particular situation on the road, the autonomous driver can reach out to a human fleet response agent for additional information to contextualize its environment. The Waymo driver does not rely solely on the inputs it receives from the fleet response agent, and it is in control of the vehicle at all times. As the Waymo driver waits for the input from the fleet response, and even after receiving it, the Waymo driver continues using available information to inform its decisions. This is important because given the dynamic conditions on the road, the environment around the car can change which either remedies the situation or influences how the Waymo driver should proceed. In fact, the vast majority of such situations are resolved without assistance by the Waymo driver. So they're saying, even when they do go out and ask for remote intervention, often the car will still just solve it itself. But they're sending out the request just in case so that a human can take a look. An illustrative view of Waymo's fleet response tooling, which provides personal real-time insights into a 3D scene of where Waymo vehicles operating. So this here is their UI, essentially. So you can see what they see. They're able to see the cameras from the car. They're able to see the visualization that's coming out of the car. They're able to see the current speed and whether the vehicle is currently in autonomous mode. A fleet response agent has a suite of tools to help them understand what a Waymo vehicle encounters on the road. For example, fleet response can view real-time feeds of the vehicle's exterior cameras and a 3D graphical representation of what the car perceives around it. They can also rewind available feeds to understand the immediate scene better. So now, not only can you see a live view of the camera, you can actually rewind that and see what was happening a minute ago or two minutes ago uh, that the car got into the situation. So here's a video of the fleet response UI. Let me play that for you guys. And you can see here there's a issue. This looks like San Francisco. And the fleet response is being asked, is the emergency vehicle blocking all the lanes? The fleet response person said yes. Is the road closed? No, the road's not closed. And these question and answers are essentially how they're able to give it feedback. And now it's, uh, you know, continuing to drive. It sees that the road isn't closed. And this is really 
what we're talking about here. We're not talking about a remote operator with a steering wheel and pedals who's actually driving the car. Think about it like the autonomous car texting a friend, right? Like phone a friend on who wants to be a millionaire. It asks these questions and a human driver can help answer the question so that you can ensure that the car is doing the right thing. Fleet response and the Waymo driver primarily communicate through questions and answers. For example, suppose a Waymo autonomous vehicle approaches a construction site with an atypical cone configuration indicating a lane shift or close. In that case, the Waymo driver might contact a fleet response agent to confirm which lanes uh, the cones intend to close. And by the way, the Waymo driver, when they're talking about that, they're talking about the autonomous system. So the autonomous system can reach out and it can ask questions. Then they say, in the most ambiguous situations, the Waymo driver takes the lead, initiating requests to do a fleet response to optimize the driving path. Fleet response can influence the Waymo driver's path, whether indirectly through indicating lane closures, explicitly requesting the AV to use a particular lane, or in the most complex scenarios, explicitly proposing a path for the vehicle to consider. The Waymo driver evaluates the input from fleet response and independently remains in control of driving. This collaboration enhances the rider experience by effectively guiding them to their destinations. So in the most ambiguous situations where the car really needs some help, they do have the ability to actually give it a proposed path. So let's take a look at the second video they've got here. So you can see here, it's a narrow street. There's a truck sort of backing down and they actually propose a path using the remote operator technology. And they say, okay, we want you to actually pull over to the side here. So now the car is executing that plan. It's actually driving a little bit onto the sidewalk, possibly because of this stopped van. And now the van is moved and they're able to give another set of instructions, see how they can sort of drop a car on the map. And that tells the car where it needs to be and where it needs to go. So the car receives that instruction from the remote operator. And now it reorients itself based on what the remote operator told it to do. And now it's ready to continue driving. So pretty cool. That looks like another example from San Francisco. The Waymo driver prioritizes the safest course of action in a given moment. In some situations, even with inputs from fleet response, the Waymo driver may come to a stop if it determines that the safest course of action is to come to stop. Once the car comes to a stop, it can autonomously remove resume operations. And in other instances, it may require additional support from the Waymo roadside assistance team to retrieve the vehicle manually. As the Waymo driver improves over time, it can solve the most ambiguous situations independently and need less help. But as with the rest of our operations, a helpful human is no more than a touch of a button away. So what's the takeaway from all this? Is it that Waymo isn't really autonomous? Well, no, I think it is doing most of the work on the computer. And, you know, there's no such thing as 100% autonomous without any help from humans today. But clearly, the car is able to do almost everything itself. I think that's pretty apparent. When you are in a Waymo and there is a remote intervention, they do display a message on the screen. So you can see pretty clearly when that happens. I think this is just part of autonomous driving. If you're having a fleet of cars out there without a driver in the real world, they need to be monitored. There needs to be a way for human operators to be able to move the car, control the car when needed. But the car needs to still execute the driving itself. It still needs to be aware it can't make a mistake because of uh, a bad instruction. So this, I think, answers a lot of questions and really shows that in order to cross over into driverless, all you really need to do is drive safety critical interventions down far enough. That is, 
drive interventions to a point where the car isn't hitting anything, right? As long as it isn't hitting anything, that eliminates the category of issues that you really need to respond to real time on the car. And you can always go and ask humans for some help if you get into an ambiguous situation and essentially just move interventions from being in the car to being remote once they get rare enough. And then even after that, you continue driving down interventions, the software gets better and better and has to phone home less and less until you know it's very, very rare for it to ask for any help ever. So I expect Tesla to also implement something like this for their autonomous fleet once they have safety criticals down enough that they can uh, handle all interventions remotely. And it's interesting to get a behind the scenes peek at what that software looks like for Waymo. So hopefully this video was interesting and that should give you a better idea of how remote operations at Waymo works and what the software looks like that the fleet response team has available to them.